Greetings, viewers and f subscribers, I suppose I should say. This is Harry Honda Moonraiser here with another Harry Potter vs. video on request. Today we have Aberforth Dumbledore vs. Grindelwald. Now, yes, I, I am very aware that these two have actually been involved in a duel. However, this duel was long before either of them reached their prime, and D Albus Dumbledore was also involved, meaning that it was not a straight-up one-on-one fight. So, we are going to be taking these two characters from their respective primes, Grindywald right before Albus defeated him, and Aberforth from the Battle of Hogwarts. Nothing else to say, so let's just jump in and see who wins this. In terms of physical skills, it's kind of actually hard to tell, as we actually have very little information on both of these, much less their physical capabilities, to be expected as both of them are wizards, and thus rely on magic above and beyond anything else. Although it is quite understandable considering it's magic, it's kind of useful. Although Aberforth is certainly, certainly looks anyways, to be bigger, stronger, and tougher, Grindelwald on the other hand is probably faster, quicker, and more agile. And it should not be forgotten that at this point, if I've got my dates down correctly, which I probably don't, Grindelwald is probably a good half a century or or so younger than Aberforth, which is also an advantage. If I remember correctly, we have seen Aberforth use physical strikes against Death Eaters when he got close in and personal, but it's again the typical fist fight and brawling, not any trained physical combat. So ultimately, I'm gonna have to call these two equals in terms of physical strength. In terms of character, it's also really hard to call, as neither of these have been well, they have been involved in quite a bit, it's just that we haven't seen it on screen. Aberforth acted as Alb his brother's uh, agent in the Hogshead for years, and although he was truly dedicated, he was also quite stubborn and less than as impressed with Albus as most people were. However, when push comes to shove, Aberforth was more than willing to get his hands dirty, and he was a capable fighter, as we saw on several occasions. Grindywald, on the other hand, we know very little. What we do know seems to indicate he was your typical dark wizard, full of himself believing muggles to be little more than animals, wanting to conquer the world, etc. Deeply interested in the Deathly Hollows, he seems to be a basically a slightly more well-balanced Voldemort. And most notably, unlike Voldemort, Grindelwald actually eventually retrieved redemption, in my opinion at least, as he outright denied to help the younger Dark Wizard in his quest for the Elder Wand. Although I suppose one could look at it as Grindelwald just getting revenge on someone who eclipsed him. I tend to favor the more idealistic option, however. Neither Aberforth or Grindywald really seem to have that many characteristical disadvantages. They both have their heads screwed on pretty straight, they're both reasonable strategists, although I would say um, Grindywald is superior in this aspect as, again, he outclassed just about every Dark Wizard in history, save for Voldemort himself. Although that is not actually stated explicitly, it is only the opinion of well, basically everyone, which does kind of lead credence to the theory. So, basically, Aberforth's stubbornness might... Well, actually, Aberforth really isn't that stubborn. He does know when to back down, and all... although, actually, in one noticeable case, he actually backed down too soon when there was still hope left. So, really, there's no real personality traits that give either of them the advantage here, and they're both... There are very different people, but in terms of a combat situation, I don't think either of their outlook would help them much, or more than the other one. And with the first two categories being tied, it all comes down to their du ability with dueling magic. And in this regard, we have to base it on supposition and theory, as we have never seen Grindywald in a duel. Aberforth, despite always being overshadowed by his brother, can certainly handle himself well. As previously mentioned, when he was younger, he managed to hold his own in a three-way duel between himself, his brother, and Grindywald. He was capable of summoning a powerful enough Patronus to curb a large group of Dementors, and he has been shown taking down a couple faceless Death Eaters. Grindywald, on the other hand, we know very little of his ability. Again, we know he was involved in the earlier duel, but that's 
the closest we have to a concrete idea of his skill. However, it has been constantly repeated and stated throughout the series that Grindelwald is only second to Voldemort, and was roughly on par with Dumbledore. And it is a guess, but I w do think Grindelwald is probably one of the most extremely powerful characters in the series. Yes, Dumbledore did manage to defeat him and take him alive, but it, by all indications are, it was a very hard and long fought duel. Unless you buy into Reader Skeeter's report on it, and I personally don't. Grindelwald, the problem with him is it is possible everything from he was pretty much like Voldemort to he always hanged back and only to only being an accomplished dark wizard because he let his underlings do everything and he was so charmanistic he managed to get a big power base to he did everything himself and was just as powerful as the later day wizards. Regardless, everything seems to indicate Grindelwald is on the same power level as, as Dumbledore and Voldemort and Aberforth, for all his skill, really never came close to approaching that level of ability. It's the same logic as giving Darth Tenebris, for example, not Tenebris, because we actually have a fair idea of what he was capable of. For example, it's like giving Darth Gravid the edge over Ashoka Tano in a fight. Yeah, we know hardly anything about Darth Gravid, but what we do know is that he was the extremely powerful Sith Lord, a member of the Rule of Two, and was likely about as accomplished as other members from the line, such as Xana, Plagueis, and Ten Tenebris. Ashoka Tano, on the other hand, we have an extremely good idea of her capabilities and what she can do, but she's still a Padawan. Abli, a Padawan who outclasses most Jedi Knights, strangely enough. Uh, letting the Star Wars slide for the moment, yeah, in terms of demonstrated accomplishments and feats, as it were, Aberforth does get the advantage, because he has more of them, but in accolades for once play a very important role as i don't really think aberforth if we removed albus's morals i don't think he would be able to stand up against his brother for long at all whereas Gr grindywald i'm hesitant to call him an equal of Voldemort or dumbledore despite having done so already several times in this video but he's certainly up there in terms of power and skill and yeah it's based off of supposition but sometimes you kind of have to do that so I declare Gellert Grindywald the winner.